Morning everyone, I am Dr. Rupa Wong, ophthalmologist, and today we're in my office and I thought I would go over what you need to do if you're trying to find a mentor, if you're pre-med or you're a medical student and you're interested in a particular field, how you approach an attending to be able to shadow them in their clinic. Because today I have a pre-med from a local Hawaii university who wanted to shadow me. So she's gonna be shadowing me today. Forgive the extremely messy office behind me. My kids were here yesterday, last week and yeah, so I got to clean it up. But anyway, if you are interested in that, keep watching. So you reached out to me, mm -hmm. just emailed to see, you know, if I had a day available yeah. where you could shadow. And I think that's the key is just finding someone local. I get a lot of people that are reaching out to me from the rest of the country, but someone local is going to be much more inclined to accept your mm -hmm. off, to, you know, take you on because it takes time to have a student, a pre-med. I mean, it's wonderful. I love teaching, but it takes time because I want it to be of, you know, a good experience okay. for you okay. as well. And so it slows me down in my clinic, basically, especially okay. if we're not in an academic center where you've got typically in academic centers, their clinic is a little bit slower. In private okay. practice, we tend to have to go really fast. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of one of the main differences. But what's your background? You're so I was born and raised on Ponfe in Micronesia, which is a small island, and we really don't have a lot of doctors. A lot of doctors do come from overseas. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And my mom is a doctor. She actually was one of the first. She was the first female. But she, the first female physician yeah, in uh -huh. Micronesia. That's amazing. Yeah, on our island. Yeah, wow. it's crazy. And um, my gosh. Yeah, her and my dad have a private practice, and yeah. they're the only ones to have that in all of Micronesia. Wow. Yeah, and so ever since I was young, I always knew that I wanted to be a doctor. Yeah. Or not, it was kind of expected, but yeah, at first it was like, oh my gosh, it's something I have to do. But I really grew to fall in love with the profession as I grew up. Yeah. And yeah, I did want to you know, make my own milestone and be the first U.S. licensed MD. But You would be the first U.S. licensed? The first female one. There is a guy that's done it. That's but amazing. But he, he went through the military and he did it. And he actually went to Jabsum too. Oh. So, yeah, I do So wanna... you want to apply and go to Jabsum. Jabsum is the University yeah. of Hawaii's medical school, which is a great school. That's where my husband went to. Great oh. state medical school. So, um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I would love to be the first female awesome. MD physician. Awesome. That's yeah. so, so exciting. And uh -huh. what kind of physician is your mother? She's just a general. general okay, yeah, like general. internist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but are you interested in ophthalmology or just wanted to get some expo I am, exposure? Just because um, back home we have like drives where people come in yes. and they'll bring all the glasses and they'll yes. go out to the villages and do their missionary stuff. So it's one of the main areas where we're really lacking. So and then but do they have do they have like an operating room to do surgery? No, they do not. A lot of patients get referred and they either have to fly here. My cousin actually came here just to get his eyes corrected. Oh, last year. Yeah. Oh, so I, I do I today Oh, here? To yeah, see here in me? Hawaii. I don't know if it oh, was okay. you. I just like heard it in a conversation oh, at the dinner okay. table. And I was like, he had to fly all the way here. Like, yeah. that's crazy. We still don't have stuff like that. So the other know. person that I think then you should probably follow as well a little bit during mm -hmm. the day is our optometrist. Okay. So she's not a medical doctor. Of course, she's an optometrist. Mm -hmm. But, you know, for ophthalmology, the main part, it's kind of half and half. You're doing clinic, but you're mm -hmm. also doing surgery. So yeah. if you don't have the ability to be able to do surgery mm -hmm. in Micronesia, then it's probably not as worthwhile to go into ophthalmology. It's yeah. probably more worthwhile either to go into, you know, a general medicine yeah. kind of thing like family practice or internists or mm -hmm. pediatrics or optometry school, which is a thought. Yeah. I mean, the reason also why I wanted to be a MD licensed doctor yeah. was because I did live on Guam for high school. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, so Guam, Guam has an operating room. I know yeah. that they have a, um, because we do get some patients from Guam. So that mm -hmm. is the interesting thing about being in Hawaii. We will get patients from Micronesia, from um, American, you know, yeah. Samoa, other uh, from other Island. Pacific Islands, yeah. um, come here to have their surgeries done. So I have done patients, but it is harder because we're trying to lump everything from the pre-op visit to the surgery, to the post-op visit yeah, it's just into not one thing. Yeah, so if we can do mm -hmm. more of the surgeries by local doctors, it's always gonna be a good thing. Awesome, yeah. okay, mm -hmm. so we're gonna get started. Okay. Let's see who's ready. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go see our first patient. As a pre-med or med student, anybody that's in the exam room, 
just introduce yourself to the patient first, or basically I will introduce you mm -hmm. and say that you're a pre-med, that you're shadowing, mm -hmm. just always okay. make sure that the patient is aware of who you are. Of course. Mm -hmm. So lazy eye mm -hmm. is, um, what we call lazy eye is amblyopia. So there are three different kinds of amblyopia. And you see what she's doing right now? She's taking notes. So the second thing, if you are a pre-med or medical student that's shadowing a doctor, carry like she is a little notebook. It shows you're interested. An attending is gonna teach you much more and be much more interested in taking time from their busy schedule if they know that you're interested and you're actually trying to learn. Um, so lazy eye is, there's ambly, it's amblyopia, and I can actually get you a brochure on that too. Um, there's three different kinds. There is strabismic, refractive, and deprivational. So one technique that a lot of physicians will use to teach is just, they call it pimping, but we're not really pimping, just asking questions to see if the information is being retained. So we had a patient earlier with a diagnosis called accommodative esotropia. So I'm gonna ask Rochelle if she remembers what that is, and it's not a big deal if she doesn't, but it's just a good way you can kind of test your knowledge. So do you remember? So break it down. Accommodative, so I think you were saying that it was the brain's way of accommodating when one eye isn't functioning to the full capacity. Close, okay, so let's look at, forget the word accommodation. Yeah, let's different. look at isotropia. What does so, isotropia mean? Iso is same. Oh, different. Like iso isomers. means, yes, iso is same. Yes. Eso means crossed in. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so esotropia is eyes that cross in. Mm -hmm. And accommodation is your ability to focus up close. Okay. So these are kids usually around age two to three that develop eye crossing because they're really farsighted or hyperopic. Okay. And we give them glasses and it makes their eyes straight. Okay. So that was one, you know, like a put typically it'll be like a plus three point zero zero kind of glasses. So that's accommodative esotropia. Okay. So no harm that she didn't know it. I only told her it to her once and I think you have to learn things like seven times or hear it seven times before it like really hits into your brain. Yeah, so esotropia, eyes crossing in, exotropia, eyes was, wandering out. Oh, okay. Yeah. And that was with the hypo... What, the Hypertropia, the, the eye would go up and hypotropia, okay. the eye goes down. Okay, Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's go check out the next patient. So very busy morning, I think we saw about 18, 19 patients, and Rochelle was great, the pre-med student, because she took notes. She wasn't interrupting me while I was in the exam room with the patient. You would be surprised that there are a lot of medical students or pre-meds that are shadowing and they're talking to the patient or they're interrupting the doctor-patient relationship to be able to get their questions answered. So you don't wanna do anything like that. So Rochelle was amazing that she did exactly what she should do. She took notes and then we talked about the patient's cases afterwards so we could discuss why we started patching treatment in one and why did I do glasses in another or why am I doing an atropine drop whatever the case may be but wait it until after so that's a big thing to do if you are shadowing you don't want to interrupt the doctor from their flow because that just slows them down even more the other thing is of course I always introduce any visiting students but make sure that it's okay with the patient that they are in the exam room. So I don't just say, this is the pre-med who's going to be in the exam room. It's like, is it okay for them to be in the exam room? So that way the patient has the ability to opt out of it because I'm in a private practice. They don't necessarily come here thinking that they are going to have students or in the involved in their care. So that's just something else I would recommend. So the first couple things that we do is we'll always take the patient's chart, open it up in our electronic medical record system, and I review it, talk about it a little bit with you, mm -hmm. then go into the exam room, and then afterwards we'll discuss the treatment. And I always tell her to take notes so that she can ask me questions later when we have a break, because sometimes we don't have a break, yes. right? <laughs> okay, so what have you thought so far? How's it been? Very fast paced, but you told me that it's slower paced when you have an internet on, so I'm only imagining what your days look like. Yes, today's actually not that busy. <laughs> actually, surprisingly, I mean, I'm seeing about 40 patients today, which is reasonable and it's scheduled well, yeah, which is good. So I very organized. And yes. I love that. And I feel like I have a lot of, you know, I have enough time with the patients that need it, right? So you saw that I can, if I need to, like there were certain patients that I could spend the extra time with. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. you're very good about spacing that out. We're blogging. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. okay, are you there? <laughs> you can be on that. <laughs> this is cute. <laughs> I'm doing a little, oh. Thank you. You can talk about, 
I don't know. Well, I was going to really talk about what it's like to be a pre-med student, what I look for, and people that are pre-meds or med students that are rotating yes. better shadows so that they're helpful instead of uh-huh. some people just come and they have the expectations. Yeah, we're not just, I'm going to do everything, but... They're trying to show that, like, exactly, and that, that they are strong personality, which is not necessarily a good thing. You don't need to have a strong personality to be a physician. You just yeah. need to have a caring personality and be smart. And yeah. yeah, and it'll show for itself. Yeah. You have to prove it every chance you get. Ex- well, that's the thing. I think some of people mm-hmm. are trying to prove their intelligence, and it's not the appropriate time to do so. Right? Or to you, yeah. At least yeah. that's not gonna, what's going to make them look good. Though. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna grab some tea. We only have black tea, like okay. uh, Russian tea and green tea. Can I get the black ice black tea with the mango syrup? We don't wear that like officially served. Oh no, but you guys used to have. Um, yeah, the, but this canteen. Oh, okay. Yeah. What flavor do you have now? So we have passion black tea and green tea. And no more syrups. What we about only the have strawberry and mango? Yeah, the mango. What size? Just that. That's good. Oh, I got it. Yeah, yeah. So we had to catch a little iced tea break. I had like a brief moment break <laughs> in between. Yeah, of course. <laughs> um, it's just nice to oh. at least have a few minutes in between because I don't think we'll have time at the end of the day because I'll have to I'll have to grab the kids. Oh. Hi, thank you. Thanks so much. All right. So yeah, what have you? Are you? How's ophthalmology? Because you're first time you're observing time, an ophthalmologist, yeah, right? It's a lot of information. And specifically a pediatric ophthalmologist, a lot of strabismus today. A yes. ton. So if you walk away at least knowing isotropia, exotropia, yeah. and what those plastic prism bars are and mm-hmm. how I use I, them. Yep. Yeah. Or even measure. just with strabismus, there's a lot of variations. A lot of variations on that. Yeah. So people may think, oh, it's like just one like, specialty, but it's not. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's so much. Yeah. It's very interesting. I was looking, I was reading about it, and it's like, I think up to four percent of children, have mm-hmm. it, which is a lot for one specific condition. Exactly, so. it's exactly mm-hmm. it. So there's definitely a lot that mm-hmm. have the condition and that need treatment. And there are five of us on the island. My old chief resident, Jean, is yeah. on Kauai. So I think six of us total in the state of Hawaii that are pediatric ophthalmologists. But And that it, well, it's not just like the appearance wise that it really does affect your Exactly. So. If you can leave with that, then I'm very happy. <laughs> That's my biggest message. It's not just cosmetic. So what we were just talking about is one of the things that drives me a little bit nuts when I have a pre-med or a medical student with me, which is they feel like their need for learning trumps patient care, which it never does or they are just trying to prove that they are interested and they are asking questions, but a little bit inappropriately so in that they are asking those questions when I am interacting with my patient. They're interrupting conversations with my patients or they're interrupting um, just in speaking directly to the patient. And for the most part, if I have someone that's shadowing that's not a physician, you really are just supposed to be observing. And then afterwards, please ask me any question. And I would think that that's what most attendings are going to feel. You don't want to have that flow interrupted with a lot of incessant questions that may or may not be relevant. So I don't need anyone to show me how smart they are. Just be interested, but be appropriate. And uh, that's very, very helpful to making a good impression. And then last, just make yourself useful. Like the student that I have right now, it doesn't have to be anything big. She's turning the lights on and off. She's gotten my flow after the you know the last 25 patients. She knows when I'm sitting down at the chair and at the slit lamp, I need the lights lowered. And my scribe wasn't in the room and she did it automatically. I notice things like that. And other attendings are going to notice. Just pick up a chart. Just help in any way that you can. The fact that you're aware of your surroundings and not just focus on yourself makes a big difference and it will get noticed. Oh, hey, so how was it? Okay, questions about different different things that you yeah. saw the prism thing okay prism so yeah we have two bars mm-hmm. we horizontal you probably saw the prisms that were going mm-hmm. fat ways and then the vertical prism bar mm-hmm. so the horizontal prism bar neutralizes horizontal deviations like mm-hmm. isotropy and exotropy okay so what i'm doing is i put the prism bar up and you see it's called a cover uncover test yeah. you know with the little paddle 
and I'm going up all the way until their eyes aren't moving at all. Mm -hmm. And then I know, okay, you hear me say ET 16. That means it took a 16 prism based, 16 based after prism mm -hmm. to neutralize the deviation. So it gives, it's kind of like our rule of like our measurement mm -hmm. tool. So yeah, our yardstick. Okay. That, and then I know with one patient, the one that had the cosmetic surgery, you ordered a blood test for her, the one that you were asking if she had any thyroid problems. So, so whenever you have an adult patient mm -hmm. with new onset double vision mm -hmm. and they don't have a history of diabetes or high blood pressure or something that could explain it like a nerve palsy, yeah. then I usually will investigate for thyroid disease or myasthenia gravis. Remember, she was... Um, so anytime you have myasthenia graphs is a neurologic condition where you can get ptosis. There's that word again, yeah. lid droop, yeah. as well as double vision. And then you can even have difficulty swallowing. There's a lot of other non-eye mm -hmm. um, complications that can happen from it. But it always gets worse throughout the day and gets better with rest. And she was saying that the double vision seemed to worsen throughout the day. Yeah. So that's kind kind of goes with it. I doubt that it's going to be my senior graphs, but I go ahead and send for those tests. It's an antibody test. Oh, okay. It's looking for acetylcholine receptor antibodies. Okay. And I check for binding, blocking, and modulating antibodies. And we have to send that test to the mainland. Oh, okay. Okay. That's what I was going to ask about what the blood test was yep. for. Yep. And then thyroid disease. And then we get an MRI of the brain just to make sure there's no brain tumor because mm. brain tumors can cause yeah. these things too. And then when you say manifest. Okay, so when we do a, a refraction, when you're behind that thing called a four opter mm -hmm. and you do one, two, one, two, that's called a manifest refraction. Okay. Like, which is better, one or two? Read the 2020 oh, okay. line. When I have a child, I can't do that, right? They yeah. can't sit behind that. They can't tell me if it's clear with one or two. And you see me use that little retina scope. Mm -hmm. And then I'm sometimes I'm still seating them behind the four opter, but I'm checking after dilation, the way that the light reflex is coming back at me, that's called a cycloplegic, cycloplegic. Yeah. Okay. refraction. Those were the main questions I had. Oh yeah, I was going to ask because when you talk about, so if it is the muscle yeah. that's having a problem, because um, if it is a damaged muscle, they can't regenerate, correct? No, exactly. So what treatment could you have? So then you will... Sometimes you can do, there's different kinds of procedures you can do. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can tuck it or, you know, do something to strengthen its action mm -hmm. to the muscle, not if the nerve is damaged. Oh, but, okay. yeah, the nerve would. But um, a lot of times then you operate on the contralateral muscle. So every muscle has what's called mm -hmm. a yoke muscle. Mm -hmm. So you operate on the, so if it's a superior oblique palsy, then you can weaken the inferior oblique muscle and improve the vertical deviation. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Is that like an old practice? Or like, is anything we've seen today, like, are those all things that have been in this practice for a while? Or is there anything that like, what like, you, you know, with the prisms and all those? Things oh, yeah. Prisms have been around for a long time. I mean, our techniques of surgery have changed over, yeah. you know, the last 30 or 40. But the measurements for strabismus are the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. But for for um, pediatric ophthalmology, mm -hmm. a lot of the tests that we use, we didn't have, right? The fundus camera yeah. to take a look at the optic nerves, the auto refractor, which gives me a starting point to do that cycloplegic mm -hmm. refraction. Those are all things that didn't exist, you know, 20 years ago. Yeah. Okay. Or maybe 30 years ago. Yeah. So, okay, yeah, because one of the tests you did, like the one on your phone that was testing to like, you were talking about the gazes and that. Oh, that's just an like app. You can figure it out. It's not a, it's a, it's just called the three step the parks three-step test yeah. that actually is a test that you just can figure it out on paper and that's for the muscle functionality right yes Which the vertical for the, for the vertical deviations oh, okay. for, for a, an eye that's drifting up yeah and then the field test was just like vision overall um, yes yeah, so a humphrey okay. visual field test that's been around for a long time that tells test your peripheral vision peripheral. Okay. because in glaucoma your peripheral vision goes first if you have a brain tumor we talked mm -hmm. about the optic chiasm right we were talking about patients with brain tumors in particular areas okay. which compress on the optic chiasm mm -hmm. it can affect the peripheral visual field and gives you like a bitemporal hemianopia or a homonymous hemianopia, different kinds of visual fields, mm -hmm. characteristic you can localize. So that's always on our ophthalmology boards. Like you look at a visual field and you have to figure out where the brain tumor is located. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, those are like the big questions. Okay, good. Yeah, just from today, it was a lot of 
as a lot. Yes, yeah, yeah, a lot of good stuff. We saw some great, um, great pathology. No, and I really will never take my vision for granted. Yes, good. <laughs> well, thanks for joining. You did great. You were really, really attentive um, yes. student. So that was great to see that you're excited and interested and you have a whole notebook full of diagnoses oh, yeah. to look up tonight, which is always what you want. Um, and yeah. Good luck with anything. Let me know if I can help you in any other way. Yeah, thank you so much. All right. Yeah. I'm going to finish this last patient and then mm -hmm. finish my bills. <laughs> Your bills? Okay. Yeah, it's been a great day. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, and always you can email me or follow up if you need. So, guys, I just wanted to tell you, subscribe to our channel and comment down below. Do all those things. Push the bell button. I also wanted to talk to you about also, check out my mom's videos. They're really good. Also, she's going to do like a lot more stuff because she has to add, edit, uh, add more humongous stuff. So make sure you check it out because it's going to be really good. You'll give it 100 thumbs up.